Welcome, everyone. We are here for another very special podcast on the Flow Show, Jeff Gross Podcast. This is episode number 192, brought to you by Club GG, where you can create poker clubs for free, play with your friends, and win cash prizes, hundreds of thousands of dollars monthly. And with that being said, I introduce the guest today, the man who's on a serious heater, life heater, live heater, online heater, everything, Mario Muzbek, if I'm pronouncing right, Mario, uh, appreciate you today being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Um, I'm excited to be on the podcast um, after we uh, did the show on Tuesday. Yes, this is great. We did a GG Million show every Tuesday. That's a big one. 10K final table uh, from Sundays, which you actually won about five weeks ago, which was cool. We got to watch you play on the show and then you came on and, you know, battle with a lot of those same faces and and, and obviously are a very big regular in the high stakes poker tournament community. So that was very cool to do the commentary with you. We kind of did a warm up for the podcast, so we'll, we'll maybe cover a few of the same things. But uh, yeah, for those that don't know you, please uh, introduce yourself and let us know a bit about your poker, sort of uh, how you started and your journey, and then we'll dive into some uh, current events and, and, and your your heater that you're on. That's a it's a long story. I'm who doesn't who don't know me. Um, I'm from Austria. I'm 27 years old. Um, all my life, I've been playing uh, sports and played mostly uh, football till I was 20, and I played professional from 17 to 20, um, and then didn't really know what to do afterwards and then slowly the uh, slowly poker filled that um, that part of my life um, so and then I would say the last four or five years poker became the the big the big thing um, uh, yeah but I started playing quite a bit earlier so I've been playing for like sounds weird but for 15 years now since 2008 it's insane if i say that but it's wow. uh 2008 2009 i started playing um on full tilt back then um playing the free rolls i don't know if you remember there was like chris ferguson had these challenges where like he turned free roll money into real dollars and yep. then the real dollars into more dollars and like had the zero to like 10k bankroll challenge mm -hmm. and for me as a kid that was just like mind-blowing but like it was touchable because he does it and make sweet is about it um and I tried to follow it and took me a couple, took me one or two years to like play unlimited free rolls because I couldn't deposit because I didn't have a credit card, didn't know, yeah. have a way to deposit. And I grinded up, won a few dollars, made a couple hundred, lost it all, did that like 10 times or something. Yeah. Um, and then I think in, like when I was like 14, so like right before Black Friday, like 2011, um, I had a good heater and then the kind of was a start. I, I won like a mini F tops event for 20 K or something. Um, right after ha happens black Friday, I've luckily got the money down, um, right in time. Right. And, um, yeah, and since then poker was always a part of me. Um, and, uh, now it's a big part. Very, very cool. And how do you, I, this is like one of the questions I want to ask later, but how do you relate poker and variance with life because like even what you just mentioned you win this you spin it up it takes time you do the you do the grind and then you win this twenty thousand. imagine it was like a little later right and you did that you hit your score you do all this work and now the money's locked for years yeah. and that so like do you do you feel that you're able to kind of uh realize that to calibrate poker in real life do you see kind of metaphor to how variance and things work and, and, and do you think that helps you in everyday life oh for sure i mean being able to like objectively analyze like uh, random events that could be by chance, like, okay, now, I don't know, like an accident happens. It was just a little bad run. Like these things, I don't want to overdo it to not be just like, okay, everything is just like um, yeah. it's bad run or good run or uh, I don't want to overdo it. But in generally it helps to, 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 to take, uh, like especially bad news take care with bad news um um way better be more neutral about it um um and i try to not be too too robotic on the on the high uh on the high emotions and just and still enjoy those and be like a little over the top with those and not too okay it's just like a like an upswing or like you know i, I want to enjoy those and i think it's important to let uh let yourself not be too too robotic 
for sure. I, I and you mentioned again Black Friday. That's the one example I give about something that's not about what happens, how you react to what happens in my personal life because I was living in the U.S. You know, at, in 2011, April 15th, Black Friday shuts down, and I remember just thinking, "Wow, this is it." You know, I'm gonna have to like move out of the country or not and get a new life or whatever. And then, you know, in the moment, it seems like it's the end of the world. Plus, I have some money frozen. Luckily, it wasn't like a crazy amount, but still, like all of it, right? Not good news in the moment, but. It yeah. turned out where it was like I was getting out, you know, same as you, actually, I played soccer my whole life. You you played professionally. I stopped in college in the U.S. like right after college. But, you know, it was uh, it was a it was a huge shock. And it was it was also like felt like the end of the world. But then I was out of shape. You know, I for a year or two, just like been eating I, this thing in Baltimore. I live in Baltimore. My roommate, we'd eat Ding Hao, right? Order Chinese, play mm -hmm. beer pong. I wake up, roll out of bed, start playing poker after play, being in school my whole life, soccer, regimented routine. I was just like letting it go. And then I was like out of shape, overweight, you know, a mess a bit. And I, and then just going through the motions. And then I was like that shock. I started playing live, traveling places, met, you know, new people, started playing live poker, was in a better, healthy routine. It kind of shifted a lot. Right. So looking back, it was like such a blessing when it, it felt like it was the end of the world. So yeah, that kind of stuff happens a lot. Um, but, but yeah, t tell me about the, the poker code and what that's, what that's been like for you. Cause I know Fedor, you know, fairly well, he's also with GG poker and, you know, uh, Matthias and, and it's a very, uh, very regimented, very respected group community. There's like five or six, I would say core pillar poker options. You know, there's, there's a uh, razor edge. That's what I use. There's upswing. There's, um, you know, solve for why does stuff. There's a bunch of different, you know, uh, you could name Patrick Leonard does one. There's all these different ones. How did you get with poker code? Why poker code? And tell me mm -hmm. about poker code for you. Um, for me, it's just a f the brand of a friend. So it, th that's how it developed. Um, Fedor started it with Matthias back then. I was not as close with Matthias or I didn't really know Matthias, I think even. Um, now we're really good friends. He's, he's a great, great and really funny guy. Even if you don't see that on the first side on the poker table. Um, it just developed. It was just like his thing. Um, at that time, I was not yet. Uh, I was not yet playing professional. He was uh, obviously super, super good uh, for many, many years, and um, it just turned into the this brand. And for for me, like the, the way I got mostly connected was then um, right before um the lockdowns um in austria we had like there was a scoop um in may and the thing was i i was playing poker but I, looking back it wasn't really that good i probably was like break even 80 dollar abi player online I, that's where i would probably rank myself yeah um yeah. and so there was scoop coming up um i talked with feda we wanted to do rent a house and we had this great house like outside of vienna and i told him i have a group of friends they are not really good at poker but really funny and i think it would be a fun time um, if we rent this house and uh, grind the the scoop there and so it was like okay sure um, we come up there booked it for a week or something i think we've played one poker session one and a half maybe and yeah. in this poker session you have to imagine where there's this long table like this like kind of like maybe 10 meter long table and everybody puts the laptop there and fedor has his setup plays the 10k the 25k scoop and next to them just all of my of my my soccer friends who just like play five dollar tournament ten dollar tournament with like 30 runners That's on amazing. winter day like really small and so like every bad beat they completely lose it every win they celebrate as if they like it was it was so loud it was just like in fade up playing the super high stakes next to it and target just like this one of the guys just completely losing it losing a, a, a an all in the three dollar tournament and we just had a great time it was it was just like okay that's amazing and the idea was kind of how cool would that be if we could that more often it was just like maybe eight eight to ten guys yeah. um if that could be our life because at this point i was I, I considered myself professional but maybe didn't make that much money with it um all the other guys were like maybe has a few little money or broke or like an, around that area right. and so we thought about okay let's make that more often and uh, in the summer there was a long 
lockdown period in Austria. So we rented a house and the idea was basically uh, for poker code to be like the, the brand over it. They, they rent it, they film it and just show what happens if you have uh, eight, eight guys in a house. What year was that? Exactly. When did you guys do that? 2020. So, and then you, so you did it in 2020 and then 2021, you hit the scoop, the score on scoop. You won it the main event. Insane. Like wow. we had two, two months there. We started quite a bit, but also not too crazy. Like it's not, we just like started down and like there, it was just, we, we played a lot of other games. We went to the lake. We like did normal summer stuff. It was nothing too crazy, but it just showed me, showed us the rhythm of okay what what we do we have to study what do we need to focus on like what routines how do we have to think about the game in that two two month period was just basically for us the start okay how do we get into um the game and how to view the game in the right way what big mistakes we should avoid and like what is the, what what does matthias make good what does Fader de- did good and both are at the highest level at that point already so it's yeah. quite easy for them to show us um how to do it um, and then we had a little bit of success. One of our guys got second in a bracelet event during that time with like 5% of his action in a Serena Doll tournament or something. Yeah. And after that, it was insane. Like after this, I, I, September 2020, when the grinders ended, um, we have a graph there was just like straight up. It was crazy. All of the guys are now professional. They have um, all living from that. Um, all have now uh, had their success and after that online we, we we won a lot a lot of money life as well it's crazy and and what do you attribute that to specifically i mean is it is it the the dedication of the craft are you guys doing like deep dive deep dive solver work is it just so efficient when you have a tricky spot or an interesting thing that you get the feedback from the best and then you all kind of like craft it like to, to your own tailoring like how how why do you think that's so effective and, and different would it have been different you think if you had just studied and, and done like poker code or raise your edge or a course mm-hmm. online how much difference is it and why is it different i think you ha- like if you know the guys i'm talking about it's not like we're computer science it's like we're average guys um we like the game a lot everybody loves the game um they're all sharp guys nothing too crazy um and we just really are very very passionate about it um what makes the difference i think is it was always kind of like i learned a lot from talking to fedor directly about the game and i learned about a lot to talking or to all the other guys teaching what i already know and what i learned and how i see it it's basically like this like you want to talk with someone that's uh, way better than you and with someone that is not on the same level and maybe even a complete beginner because it makes yourself to rethink the process over and over again. And if you cannot really explain your thoughts to someone that is not as good yet, then maybe you don't really understand it uh, that well already. And I think this constant loop of um, where, and also th- like having an anchor of like, okay, this is achievable, failure is not he's obviously super good but he's not out of reach um and for the all my other friends i was not out of reach and so it kind of got, got a dynamic where um everybody believed that and everybody understood that okay matthias and Fedor said this is the right path and we just do it and do it for a while and is there is no real there's no real sh- secret to it it's just y- we one thing is uh, like it's obviously tough to get a routine and i noticed a big difference when they made fun now but it's, we, we did like a, a little a little side bet where we set a uh, like study amounts like everybody in the group had to study i think it was 10 hours a week and you had to study at least 30 minutes a day for like half a year um, we put money on that and that everybody after like a month even though they had a hard time studying it all before. After a month, everybody was just in that rhythm and it keeps on going for months yeah. and months yeah. and months because they have this incentive. And then the results come in, they say, okay, it works. You can make a living out of that. And then it just keeps rolling. And um, eventually you realize, okay, wow, now we made a lot of jumps in quite a short time. And 
Yeah. And, and when you actually, so when you, when you won that, that 839,000, uh, scoop yeah. main event, w- were you in, you were in that, you were in a group environment or were you at, were you a, were you like alone? Was that, was that part of a grind house? Cause you did the grind house before yeah. were you, you were oh, at the home grind house was, um, 2020. in 2020, I wanted 2021. I actually wanted in, in this house. It's my grandparents' house. Um, oh, wow. they still, I think my grandma just passed away then and we i played it uh downstairs in the in the living room it was not a not a, a grindhouse setup but it's actually funny because grindhouse 2 was filmed uh right at that time in vienna so i won it and then i took the car drove to and then we partied at the uh, grindhouse wow. with uh, uh, other guys it was wow. actually quite yeah that's man that's crazy and and what about it, it, was it because so i did a stream house right stream we did it, yeah. it with jamie back in the day kevin martin matt staples that was fun we mm-hmm. did like stream boat the hurricane game with bill perkins we were just talking before mm-hmm. about you know you're, you, you like uh listening to bill and and some you know just die with zero book um but so with kind of this this we've done before uh like this type of idea and dynamic but was it was there actually street was it more like a grind house where you guys are doing stuff or because i know fedor does some they're streaming, right? Some of these guys do. There is streaming uh, in this group of sorts mm-hmm. that do it. Like, it, was there actual streams going on, or is this just like a like, together grind and, and hang out? No, no, nobody streamed. Uh, Fedor streams from time to time, but from the guys, nobody uh, streams. Um, even though I think they would be born for streaming, they are really right. like very loud, outgoing. They stream it. It would ch- could do it in English, but they never like never really picked up. Um, but all of them, I would say, are now good mid to high stakes player, and it's crazy because like every single one of them, there's not a one who didn't uh, go through and who can uh, like all are playing now, maybe hundred fifty dollar online and like all the mid to high stakes life and just have a decent life with it, and um, this has been an amazing success. Like uh, if you told me that three years ago, I would not have imagined how that turns out that's that's crazy and what about what are your thoughts on twitch your youtube streaming live like do you have it would you ever want to do it have you done it would you do it mm, i'm if for, for me, i'm not the right personality for that it's um i'm not a not like i enjoy consuming and i enjoy talking with someone who talks a lot because i can just tag along um <laughs> and have a hard time t- talking with someone who doesn't talk a lot because yeah. then I have to think about topics and like th- this is tougher. And then talking to no one, it would be for me, okay, that, that is just difficult and it just doesn't come naturally. I, I, um, I actually have a big problem. Well, that I work on, like, that's my number one thing is because I've, I streamed on Twitch for years. Right. And it's, yeah. it is wild to talk to a camera <laughs> for 12 hours straight and just like yeah. talk and like maybe engage with a question, but go ahead and just talk. It is you know, it's hard to turn that off. And it's like on a podcast, I always have to, or I just try to like, I know that I, I'm so used to talking so often that it's just like, mm-hmm. that's my, like my rhythm. Right. So I, I have to like, remember, okay, this is a podcast. I need it. Like it's, but there's, it's about the guest. I, I catch myself always talking a lot, but, um, but yeah, it is, it is definitely not for everybody and it is tiring, mm-hmm. you know, to do for, for that amount of period and, 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 and just keep it going. So it's, it's a um, yeah. skill to be funny and entertaining for a long time. That is definitely like very, very, uh, it, it, for sure. I mean, it's, it's interesting to see people that are, um, I talk about this all the time. I think it's fascinating mm-hmm. to see world-class players that do also stream and you've seen yeah. like an ape styles, you know, I know Lex Spraggy, Finn, these guys are working really hard on their game. Same with Jamie Staples, mm-hmm. Matt Staples, Kevin Martin, also someone that yeah. streamed a lot was, he actually was the one that got a lot of scrutiny where po- yeah. at the time poker star signed him and like this was when the sort of shift from like the high roller crushers deals yeah. to like content deals and i remember people are like outraged that he got a deal because he was like not a really you know at the time not a whatever yeah. but he's worked really hard and he's like been become a great streamer and also like putting the work in on the studying and you see ben <laughs> cb you know ben raleigh is a good friend of mine i don't know how well you know ben um mm-hmm. and I, I work with raise your edge and like he also right he's he's like elite 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 and he also now does some streaming. So like when you get that sort of hybrid, it's it's rare because like, you know, to be a great player and to be a great content creator, it's like there's only so much time in the world. Right. And when you stream, you give up you give up that sort of some of the edge showing some of your cards, but also like the focus, which it it definitely takes a lot of focus to follow a chat, play a lot of tables do your best it's sort of that that was my big thing i i felt like i got caught in no man's land a lot right where i'm like eight tabling 
trying to like follow everyone. I'm, I also know I'm not the greatest poker player in the world. So it's like to give not a hundred percent attention and not a hundred to the chat. You're kind of like, you know, yeah. figuring this, like everyone's not getting the right attention, but I got, that's my next question for you about tables. I, I do see you mention about that. What is your suggested amount of tables? What's the most tables you'll play when you play online tournaments? And what is, do you think is optimal for you? Um, for me personally, I would say it's lower than average. I'm very, I have a hard time with multitasking and if I get distracted on one thing or I focus on one thing, I cannot think I have, well, I can like barely can think about a second thing at the same. That is for me, I, I fo really focus on this and then I just get lost on the other. So yeah, I would say I, 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 there is no right or wrong answer. It's more of what uh, certainly feels like um, fits in the situation. Um, for me, like right now, I play mostly Sundays and there is a difference. So let's say I start, I, I start, I start with the highest value tournaments at the beginning. Um, so around six and I start with like the 530 where you, you get the extra chips. And so you, I fill it up to like six to eight tables. And then if a high value, value tournament comes in, I add it to the, to the screen and I better like, try to keep it between six to eight. Um, but some tournaments, the late drag ends, and then you just have to add them. Um, so I add them to like uh, like a nine for 10th table, but it's also fine to add a tournament with like 10 big blinds rather than with 100 big blinds because the decisions will be just way easier. And I try, like I keep the tables with like small uh, chip stacks on one side to like kind of have them autopilot and the deeper ones or the more important ones in a separate area where I keep most of my focus. And I, what I would recommend is being, uh, even if, like, I know I play worse um, during the peak hours of the Sunday, but it's a trade-off that yeah. I have a lower win rate per hundred for, like, maybe from seven to nine. Um, if I play 10 or 11 tables, then if I would have over six, but I increased my revenue over the time and the ROI doesn't get impacted by so much if my starting win rate is a little bit lower. Yeah. So I sacrificed it for it a little bit and then till 10, I just make sure to add all the tournaments, yeah. but I never go above 10 or 11. That's, that's my absolute cap. And I try to keep it at eight. And then if I have a deep run, I stop, um, I stop adding tournaments and I yeah. cut the ones that are not that important to one side of the, the screen and focus really on the the most important yeah. one. Yeah. It, it, it amazes me, you know, Patrick Leonard, Chris Mormon guys I've had on, the podcast that that like you know they can 20 table and like comfortably pads yeah. is insane like he's like he's doing his instagram story as well like doing this and whatever I, it's like that the same thing for me i'm not my brain is it's like i i just noticed a huge difference when i'm like two tabling versus you know 12 or 10 yeah. or 8 and yeah. streaming yes. it's, it's just it's a big difference um i gotta i just was scrolling through your instagram i know we we covered soccer and, and here you're you know your fiance here did she go to arkansas what's the i, I you're, you're from the europe what's the arkansas you're at a basketball game what's that about she's from fayetteville arkansas ah, okay so this was the first time i visited her in okay um, arkansas we went to the razorback game yes. insane experience i was yes. this 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 month, I was in September for a month there. First time I went to a, f a college football game. Insane experience. Um, I, I absolutely loved it. Um, the area is amazing. Um, Northwest Arkansas. It's Fayetteville, Bentonville, Rogers. Um, really nice area. Bentonville is where Walmart was founded and the headquarters is still there. So yeah. a lot of the city was built around that. And a lot of the... It's a very economically... Um, booming area and very pretty as well it has the the beaver lakes um the ozarks uh, very nice it's quality. interesting because the stereotype i have of arkansas is very country hit like yeah. hill, like kind of like you know i mean it's one it's actually one of the few states i don't i haven't been to arkansas and i don't know much about that state yeah. there's probably like six or seven states that i'm just kind of like stare thinking you know idaho or you know north yeah. dakota south dakota and then some of the ones in the south that are you know, I just like haven't spent much time, but so that, that's, yeah. that's cool. That's good to hear. How did you meet your fiance? When did you meet? Um, we met when I was 20. So yeah, seven years ago. And we were on, I was on, um, I was on holiday with Martin, my friend. We went to Costa Rica, just like backpacking or we had a car and to, to coastal to hostel. And it was New Year's Eve. Um, and we went to, in Santa Teresa, maybe you know the place. That's well, it's crazy. I was just there last week for a full week. I was just looking oh, at really? 
at this picture and I was like, wait, I took a plane like this too. So yeah. Is that from Costa Rica? I was going to ask is, you. Yeah. That's the that exact we, plane we took. Like this we, purple. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's, it might it's be the plane we took, honestly, from, from San Jose to Santa Teresa. Exactly. exactly. It, it flies there and then you oh, take like a little shuttle. Um, yes, it was exactly. two or three years after we went back to that with uh, Fedor and a, a friend's group and rented the house. Um, but we were there over and that is, but I don't know if you know, banana beach, it's like one of the beach restaurants. Um, okay. and we, we, I walked with Martin there and it was new year's Eve and it was eight, uh, and there were like a lot of young people, a lot of girls there. And so we're like, Hey, later we come back here, uh, looks like a fun place. So we come back at like 10 and there was just like, everybody was gone. It was only dinner anymore. Um, so we just, okay, let's take one, maybe drink something, but let's go. And then I walked in and then I saw Amanda sitting on, um, on the table with, uh, with now I know it's her parents and then another, uh, two older, um, gentlemen and, the, and his wife. Um, and I was like, okay, I don't know if I should ask or like go over and say hi and gotta say hi. a little bit yeah, and, yeah. uh, after like when we were we were about to walk to to a to a new year's eve party uh, in the hostel nearby and walking away i was like mm, i probably would really uh, regret not saying hi yeah and so i went up uh, i said hi to the table um tim amanda's dad stood up he was like is this uh i think it was linebacker like the guy that protects the quarterback and uh, he's like a, yeah or like a center or whatever yeah like center, yes that's what he he was a center so he's like this huge man he stands up shakes my hand and um i was like holy shit like he had the he has the mass, most massive hands i've ever seen like probably 50 percent more than my hand it was crazy right. yeah, yeah so I like asked, a, you're a true football player like a big, yeah. big guy yeah yeah so i asked if i could um take out amanda for um going to the hostel party and he wait, wait no. you asked him right there or you had never spoken to her and you asked them like you asked them, you talked to her and then you, and then you asked, you didn't just like ask them without checking with her. Right. No, it was kind of, I, I talked to the whole, like okay. I talked to her, yeah. her parents and like kind of had to talk to the whole. Right. Group. I got it. That makes right. sense. Right. And say, that'd be pretty wild if you just didn't even let you just said he's never <laughs> talked to her and like say hi. And then you say, Hey, can I take her? Yeah. But okay. I get it. I, who knows? Maybe that would be, that would work too. Maybe, but yeah um, and it's yeah. um yeah and then he was like mm, nah hostel party sounds really sketch we're in a different country she was 17. um so fair enough i was like uh, okay i then i uh, don't know i gave her my number big mistake always give uh always take their number first as yes, well true so true. i walked in um i walked to the party and the next day tried to text her and I didn't know that Americans don't have WhatsApp. So I expected to have WhatsApp and I was in airplane mode. So I didn't connect. I thought maybe she was just not interested. And then randomly on the next day on the street, they drive by and Tim has this like big American SUV and the brakes next to me, rolls down the window. like, Hey Mario. And it's like rolls down the window of Amanda and she uh, opens the door and like ask if we can go for, for a walk or dinner. And I was like, sure. I'm up to, uh, go for uh lunch or like dinner anyways and then we hit it off and uh yeah so this was this was that and then she was i mean she was still in high school and i was uh, playing professional football in um austria so it was she uh, actually is like super impressive she came to austria a couple of times yeah and like finished high school early and it's crazy it's yeah really that, impressed that, by that, that's awesome ended. That's yep. an awesome story. It's funny because one of my, we, I was just for Thanksgiving in, in Santa Teresa at a house with Antonio Sfandiari, who's one of my very, very close friends. We had a great trip. And one of his close friends who I've gotten closer with, yeah. had a girl on the beach there, went up, talked to her. We were having Thanksgiving dinner on the beach at, at the house. And he, we were like giving him like, yo, go talk to this girl. She was from Germany. And he went and talked to her. Now they're like true love. It's like they're wow. already like dating. And this was like last week and like crazy. Yeah. But yeah, for a similar, it's a, it's a magical place, you know? Uh, it's where magic <laughs> you always happens. have to go for it. It's like, exactly. It's like, there's no downside. All right. So yeah, you meet your now fiance in Santa Teresa. You're there uh, pretty, pretty crazy. And you're still playing professional soccer. I do see some notes. It's actually very interesting. because around the exact same time I played soccer my whole life. And I stopped at college. I think you were 21. I was like 21. <laughs> 
And I, and I kind of like say, I see a quote here. You said, I stopped enjoying daily training and no longer felt the football is what I want to do. I increasingly ask myself, is this exactly what I want to devote myself to for 15 years? So tell me about that. Do you remember the, the moment or the time or the feeling? Was poker already a big part of your life where you had been playing online and you kind of, that was your more of your passion or were you just sure that soccer wasn't going to be it? Mm. It was more of a slow process. Like, you, you, you know that as an athlete, like some days you enjoy more than others. And for me, um, like it slowly transitioned into, hey, I don't really enjoy this. Like I, I like some parts of it. I don't like it to be this overwhelming part of my whole life. And I feel like I felt um, that I was developing as a player, I become better, I like get up like this kind of like success ladder um but as a person i felt kind of stuck or like not developing or like not in the right surrounding i didn't really enjoy my my uh, yeah my, like my workspace I, it was not how i wanted to be um how how i see my life in in that in that area and i just felt like this was not um this is like for me it was okay I now go through this path because um, I was pretty good and will likely end up somewhere where the decision to quit will be increasingly more difficult. Like mm. at this point, I was already making uh, good money. I was living a, um, a decent life and it was um, like you have these upsides as a professional athlete where like like socially, you like, well, well, you financially and it's just everybody thinks, okay, this is the, the like peak and nobody would ever decide to quit or something. Um, but um, if if I now go through this path, like I will earn more money, I will be more recognized as a person, it will be increasingly harder to quit down the road. Um, because like if you play in Germany and you make 3 million a year, dare you not quit, doesn't matter how unhappy you are with, with uh, your life. And I didn't want to be stuck around there somewhere. And so I thought to myself, okay, either I stop and see if I miss it. And if I miss it, I just come back a month later. Um, yeah. Or I don't miss it. And it would be the right decision to not do it. Or I go full through and just eyes closed do it for 15 years, make that my career. And I just didn't feel like this would be the right. And I didn't want to quit along the way. Um, if I already felt like this is uh, leading me to maybe success, but uh, success without uh, fulfillment or happiness on along the way. Yeah, it makes sense. And it's tough when you put your life right. It's something that you're passionate about and that you're it's mm -hmm. it's it's a difficult decision, of course. And yeah, I mean that's uh and, and do you ever think about what if or do you not really regret just enjoy the time you had, or do you kind of look around and how much do you follow football or soccer, if you will, now? Mm -hmm. I I I got the like I had a good mentor at that time. He was playing uh Premier League and uh, was the Austrian captain in the uh, national team. And I talked with him a ton about it, like really change, like how do I feel now? And they like the, the context, like everybody who I talked to, like is at the level that I envisioned, like peak success, um, kind of had the same response. It's just like, yes, changes a little bit, but it changes rather to the worst. It gets more isolated. You feel it's definitely more, even more uh, cold at the at the top. And it's just, for me, it felt, Okay, it, it's it's I have to make a decision for for my life, even though uh, yes, there could be success in in football, but for me as a person, it just uh, didn't fit. And I remember writing, um, I write myself a letter because like I thought about okay, what if I regret it in three years and I'd be like okay, I made the dumbest mistake. So I wrote myself a letter. I wrote letter uh, to Mario in the future and. I wrote down exactly how I felt and the reasons why I wanted to quit. And then I showed that to uh, Paul, who was my mentor at that time, and showed him this like this is the reason if I ever consider this could have been a mistake along the way. Um, he should just show me the letter again. And uh, then I get into the because like you if you think about it, you only think about the positives, you forget the, the negative sides pretty easily. Um, and then you just okay it all was so nice but no it, it was not all sunshine and rainbows it was not um yeah, yeah. and for me now like i don't ha didn't regret this 
one th one moment in my life afterwards. It's crazy because like talking about this, I can talk about it um, from having observed this, but it doesn't really feel, it feels like a different life that I've lived a while ago. And this it's like, if someone says I'm a professional football player, I'm just like, oh yeah, that, that happened. But it's just feels surreal to talk because like, it's so far away now. It's just like out of, I still play, but, and, and the thing is, I would say, uh, top 10, uh, best moments in, in football I had afterwards. Like I had them uh, at the small clubs that I played. Didn't really matter like what level. Um, yeah. It's just like the the moments with the friends, and um, we talked about Bill's uh, mo uh, book uh, before. There's one time we had like maybe I don't know which league, maybe four, fifth, sixth league in Austria, something like that. Um, and for me, that was the perfect setup for football. I trained like once a week or. Uh, maybe not and then played on the weekend and just with the best guys like just like from a little yeah. village they're like kind of farm boys and then but we had a good team and everybody was just like the best people and it's, uh, that's how i loved it and that, that's another thing where like i recognized it in the moment but i wish i would have even more realized okay how special that period afterwards was yeah yeah no that's uh yeah exactly right it just it's yeah I, I mean i remember too soccer growing up in the u.s it's like i played in club very competitive and then you know and it's high school club but then that time like yeah. with the team as a club where we mm -hmm. were traveling going to tournaments and win you know playing for state winning state yeah. championships like that was more fun when i got to college like you know i just it's something it just changed and i i think a lot of that too is variance as well like with the coach yeah, yeah. with the with the how you fit in what you know like it's so crazy how with these leagues and stuff too you could go to a place where if you're a center forward or you're a center midfielder there's already like someone there that's like you know it's just the positioning yeah. and the luck and the timing how you get along with the coach how they feel what version they see it's it's just like kind of crazy because like it's same thing in us in college you go you get looked at if you're a pretty good player you go to various schools and it's it's a wide like you know you could have a senior that's in your position so it's like cool you're a freshman then you come in as a sophomore but maybe there's a, a sophomore that's great that's at your yeah. position and now you're a freshman and you're just kind of always behind or like whatever you have to think about these things I mean, it's the same in college football right to quarterbacks you see like it's weird right you go to alabama or michigan and be like mm -hmm. the backup or you could be the starter at like a pretty good school and whatever so it's 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 difficult and that and that the coach and how you get along with the teammates and the environment it's just uh it's it's uh very interesting and it's there's no science i think to it there's definitely some luck involved with that yeah. um it's sport. it's like you, you just uh, sometimes you like you can control a little bit and if you're more aware of it um but it's mostly like we're, we're impacted mostly by the surroundings and um we don't realize how much it impacts and there's a, I think a, a quite a nice book where um, I forgot the title, but one of the core concepts was like showcasing is yes, the talent is needed, but the external factors play a big role. And there is, I think, a stat in the NHL, and I don't know which date is the drop off date, but the um, every like 60 or 70 percent of um, NHA players are born within a three months or four months period after this drop off date and barely no one anyone before. And the reason for that is because um, that's the drop off date at like eight years old or 10 years old in Canada where you make it into like the programs um, or not. And at that time, being a year older or like 11 months older is a huge difference. So you make it in there and then you start the circle and then you just start developing. Or yeah, you don't. I I think, well, it might be Malcolm Gladwell, one of these books you're talking about, mm -hmm. Tipping Point, yeah. or one of these, like, for sure. Where the, I know in the U.S., the same thing. Like, for soccer, mm -hmm. for the state team, it was, like, January 1 to, to mm -hmm. you know, December 31st, right? But for the yeah. for the clubs, it's, like, September or August 1st to whatever. Mm -hmm. So, for eight, I was in 87, even mm -hmm. though I'm, I'm born in 86, because the cutoff was, like, August 1, and I'm born yeah. September 5th. So, I'm, like, the oldest – and this yeah. 87, but in the 86 for the state and the regional and the national team, I'm in the nine months difference. So, yeah, it makes a big difference at eight, mm -hmm. nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years yeah. old, that extra, you know, potential nine months or year of development and what, where you're, which position you're with the kids. So there, that, yeah. that it's, this, I think that's the thing you're referencing. I've read this book yeah. as well. And there yeah. definitely is like for the 87, I was, you know, captain of my team and I was 
whatever. And then at 86 for the state team, it's like I was with these guys that were on the year older playing the best kids and it was, it was tougher. Right. So it's, it's, there's, there's luck in that as well. And I think it's the same principle, but um, mm -hmm. for hockey and, and any, any sport when they do it like that. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting. It's very interesting stuff, but it's safe to say you're happy you found poker. Uh, what, what yeah. is your current outlook on the game and your upcoming schedule? I know you're, you're about to go to the Bahamas, right? For the WSOP in, mm -hmm. in Nassau. Um, I fly actually on Sunday, so in four days. Um, very excited. I really like live poker. Um, it allows me to just focus on one game and not eight tables. So, yeah. And that's, I think, where um, I'm the strongest. And I'm very excited. I f I'm very excited to play um, the main, the 25K. I think there's a 1500K as well. Um, and then we fly to Vegas right after for the WPT, play the main event there. Um, and then for this way later is the one drop, which I will be playing, um, this time. So I'm very excited. First time yeah. ever. I, By far I, the biggest buy in. <laughs> I, I actually did see uh, you're selling some action, uh, for the yes. 1 million, you 20% put up there and I know you've sold, you know, on the side mm -hmm. to friends and stuff. What is that like? You've played the two. Oh, let's just, let's cover this too. Since we're here, mm -hmm. the 200 K that was your biggest buy in correct that you just got second in, yes. I believe to yeah, Dan Smith also friend been on the podcast great player what what was that like all of a sudden what was your biggest score before that live live because online you had an 839 did you have any any pretty big scores? i didn't i didn't beat that i've maybe, so maybe a couple hundred k i not too much wow maybe so, yeah. so so what is that like when you buy into a 200k it's, your buy-in is bigger than your largest score ever and now you yeah. you're the, tell me about like the bubble what the experience was like and then to be heads up i want to hear the whole thing this is crazy you all of a sudden hit no six-figure score and now you're playing for a seven-figure score with this kind of life-changing money up top what was that whole experience like so like it starts off right early because getting into the tournament is actually quite tough you yep. need to, to find someone that wants to partner with you and i tried to find someone for cyprus didn't didn't work out um tried to find something for london didn't work out um and in cyprus during the triton i met uh, alex um he's a uh, he's a uh, first time playing the tried events there and i realized okay he's uh he's, he's tough to play um smart businessman but like he has some moves so um, we started talking um and i asked him if he ever comes to another triton if he wants to play the 200k together and he was like mm, he hasn't considered that it's a high buy-in but yeah why not? Uh, alexander shelokin okay yep and um so I hit him up in a uh, few few months before the event. He's like, hey, are you coming to Monaco? And he's like, yeah, he already booked the flight. Um, and then we started talking about the 200K. And he was like, mm, yeah, maybe. Let's try it. And then we started. And so I was like, hey, holy shit. Now I'm playing the 200K. Um, I played a couple hundred Ks before, but this was then uh, doubling that by far the biggest buy-in. And... I was very excited because it's a great tournament. Like you have half half pros, half VIPs, um, very good structure. And so I get there, and I, I ju it just felt I, f I felt uh, amazing right from the start. I had good runs. Um, it, it was interesting because it felt different. I felt for me it was okay. I I was normally reasonable with my bankroll management. I took a normal piece, um, and definitely the biggest piece I've ever had. Uh, but just a normal piece. Um, and it felt like other players were kind of, that this was a very big tournament for them. And that's how it felt. And I'm generally like online, I'm playing um, quite aggressive. I'm uh, trying to win a lot of non-showdown non hands and just fit it very well. And um, it started from the day one, I think it ended day one at um, fourth in chips and then came to the five, final table and like, fifth in chips and the crazy part was after day one um i kept winning some hands and then it was the area from like 20 left to 15 left where it's like 14 are paid and i was sitting on the table with um dan smith danny tang uh haralabos vulgaris mm -hmm. um elton and it was with 14 left and it was just like the most fun experience ever bob had his 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 uh, dog oscar there yeah and was just like chatting and it felt it really felt like a home game and it absolutely didn't like it 
like it was by far the biggest stakes I've ever played. Um, and it just was just fun, laid back experience. And I was just like, okay, that is amazing. So Did we played that. Mm -hmm. Were you, were you, how was your chip stack in that moment? Cause although it's fun and whatever you realize like, the, cause these are, these are big swings, especially when yeah. you, you know, your biggest buy-in, like somehow you get cooler or, you know, yeah. you get out or whatever, right? Like it's all fun and games, but that would, that, that's tough to overcome and can set you up mentally, uh, in a, in a tough place, right. Versus like, you know, that min cash alone is so big. So what was your stack like on the bubble and how were you mm -hmm. able to, uh, did you chip up at all? Was it, was it, was you, were you just, or were you handcuffed? I was one of the bigger stacks most okay. of the tournament. Elton and Dan Smith had me covered at that time, um, but I still had like 50 big blinds. And right. even though, yes, it's a big min cash dollar wise, it's not that huge of a diff, like it's 1.5 buy-ins. The first place is 20 buy-ins. So it's quite important to not sit out. And I think that's where the edge comes from. And I knew that like, yes, I play this tournament, but I really don't think about the money part. Right. Uh, that's, because that's I, important. If, yeah. if like study wise and con like theory wise, I'm, I know I'm very good and that's where my edge comes from. And if, if I play it like a normal tournament, I will uh, have a very high win rate. And so that's only the only thing I focused on. And I was just like, whatever happens, happens. And, and, and then it went in and it was crazy because I came in like third in chips and like Danny Tang had a really big stack to my right. Dan Smith was the runaway chip leader. And from eight to nine left, I busted in favor and seven for something. Um, and at that time, I was just like suddenly winning every pot. It just like I felt really in the zone. I was picking up a good good reads and then was playing pretty, pretty loose and was able to have a runaway chip lead with starting with six left. I think I already had. Yeah half of the chips in play something crazy yeah um what, what's that like what's that like to battle with a, a friend one of your close friends who also like is sort of like in a way your coach right you come into poker yeah. code you kind of yeah. learn tricks and, and study together how does that to battle and how does it feel to knock him out in that moment i i mean i'm quite competitive at, so he's he so it's it's even more uh okay we just play hard against each other um and it's always something where like you don't want to have the thing okay like their friends, they don't battle each other. So yeah. you kind of go extra hard, which like hurts yourself as well. Um, but that's kind of the, like, we just played yeah. out and the way I busted him was, was totally standard. Um, yeah. So I, I actually, I like that part playing against right. uh, friends because uh, they know me really well. I know them really well. I know how to think. And then it's just like, okay, what does he think that I think? Right. So that, yeah, that, it's, a, that. it's an interesting <laughs> development. But and so you get six handed and now five handed. Yeah. You can see here it's a million dollar score. What was that like when you're like, hold, like, did you were you looking at the pay jumps at this point? Like, wow, wow, wow. I wasn't, and, you know, I wasn't. Or over it, here, the like, number was crazy. And then like I never considered like how much money that is. And because I was just okay, if I, I, I was it's just funny because I was thinking about um, what Bill said in his book when it's just like these moments are so rare, like first time playing this event um with so much money on top i want to make sure i enjoy this and this it was like because that was my priority for me that was my i want to sit there i want to be present and enjoy the next hours and i wanted to last as long as possible and be as happy with what i uh, do, do as possible and everything like rest you cannot control anyway so um I felt really good and I didn't want it to end. And every time the blinds increased, I was like, ah, now it gets short. It probably ends soon. So I was like, eh. And so it went from five to six handed. Um, and then three handed, I still had like 60 or 70% of the chips. Then Dan busts Elton in third place. And then we go heads up. And I had, I think, a two to one chip lead. And um, yeah, the heads up wasn't too long. Like Dan won basically every hand. Um, and uh, it was yeah over quite fast and was like pretty disappointed because like winning a Triton, such a special Triton, um, would have meant a lot in that moment. Um, but I was very happy with how it went. Um, I haven't thought about the money part in that 
in that moment yet. Well, we'll, uh, we'll get to that. You didn't have to wait too yeah. long, right, to stew about possibly winning a Triton, which is also pretty yeah. incredible. Uh, and then quite an advertisement, although, again, I'm, I got a disclaimer. I've worked with Razor Edge, Ben Raleigh. Yeah. You know, that's my guy. But shout out to Poker Code. There's a second for you and a first right above in the oh, yeah. uh, the main event, No Limits. So that's quite an advertisement here. Matthias getting his uh, – he's always wearing that, that uh, custom – green or uh, orange logo yes. hoodie i know where to find him and, and where he's at in every tournament that's him but what well, i mean talk a little bit about him and how his game is because he's he's I, I don't even he must have 30 40 50 million earnings i have to look but he's he's like crushing and playing and seems to win on all stops all the time he's he's uh oh, i mean how, how good is he how good is matthias matthias is yes. freak he like he's the guy that sits down and just like how Okay, I'll tell you a little bit background of Matthias. Matthias used to play uh, sit and goes for Supernova Elite, and he was multi tabling. He's an absolute grind machine and very, very detail oriented. Like, he has this drive, he wants to make it perfect. So, he was playing sit and goes, and he had he told, he told a story about how he optimizes his sleep so he completes the Supernova Elite in like three weeks in January. That was his goal. Just play so much that, like, before January ends, he already has Supernova lead. Uh, and the way he did it, he was he was playing, slept for ninety minutes, played again, slept for ninety minutes, played again. That's how, like, he's he's he he didn't have like a long sleep through, but like just like this constant power naps. And that's how he yeah. is. And then. Um, stars changed the system, so he kind of was out of a job suddenly and it was like the closest thing that now is available like i guess playing tournaments and also very special how he just didn't just start playing he didn't play a single hand of poker for seven months sat down i was like okay what do i need to study preflop solved everything preflop it was right before we had gto wizard preflop ranges solved everything um solved a ton for post flop and then just started three months of Preflop, four months of uh, post flop, and jumped right into the super high rollers. And if if Matthias says he studies, he means getting up at eight in the morning and going to bed at ten, and studying for ten to fourteen hours. Wow, that's how he is. And it, it, it does it does make me. I mean the the the. the uh... Man, I, I it's it's crazy because like I I do my my wife's Brazilian right Portuguese yeah. is the language and I, we've been together for I met her eight years ago or whatever and I still my son's four years old and he's actually passed me like I under I do like five ten minutes of Duolingo a day and I feel like I'm doing yeah. well but I'm not you know I can still I understand and I'm getting there but like that's over like a year right I've started I was just like same same kind of mentality like well what if I just do like five ten minutes a day I'll get it right it's gonna happen yeah. but like. Yeah, that that type of dedication and study is is dangerous, right? That it shows you like there's a reason these guys and you and you know people that have these results and fade or like you really dedicated to the craft. Like you're put it's not just like all right, like check a spot, peel solver, one or two hands and talk like it's in there putting in the work and yeah, I mean that's that's what you're competing with at these these stops, right? These guys and, and people are working hard at their game and it's not easy yeah. to just come in and, and, and it does make a difference, right? Because it might be the difference in one oh, yeah. or two spots where like it's like a critical bet size or a, a check or a fold and and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a lot to compete with. Um, but of course, anyone can win on any given day and we do see uh, some some non-pros and, and guys winning at times, right? But it's, it is it is impressive and that's scary. Gonna have to, I don't have, he's one guy I've never got to connect with. Love to have him on the podcast. Love to have him on as a guest on GG. You have to have after. him open up. You know, he's he's not the, if you see him at table, you're like, maybe it's like, like uh, maybe a bit distant, but what, like once you get to know him, it's like actually very funny, <laughs> uh, very uh, sweet. So he's just like, kind of lighthearted um yeah. not intimidating at all just like really obsessed with poker um and yeah I've, it's just really fun to be with um very 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 interesting guy i don't yeah i don't one i don't know much about but i do want to go in and segue into again you didn't have to wait long how many days later was this where you got to win it's a big one 718 yeah. plus the bounties that which the mystery bounty which i guess what was your biggest mystery bounty um i think a hundred um it is it's not that steep on on triton so it's like it's 80k value and this lowest one is 40k and the biggest one is 400k 
So it's, okay. the variance is not that crazy from the bounties. Um, I think it was 840 in EV for the 10 bounties. Um, but like the, the, the guy before me, he put like the 400, 200, 100. He won three, had three bounties, 240k value and pulled out 700k. So wow. assuming that, I, or I, I ran uh, above EV when it was my turn. Well, so what, um, what he got, what place did he get? It just doesn't show. Like, cause that means somebody got like, yeah, oh, wow. he got ninth. So he got ninth, but he's going to get like more than second. Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, he and fought the 30. 400, 200 and got eight and 100, I think, and got eighth place finish. Oh, pretty crazy. Um, Tell me about this. So you win this yeah. tournament. What does this feel like when you get back heads up and now you're like, wow, like I just was here. I want the trophy. You see your fiance in the winner shot. She's there watching. Like how, uh, how was that? To, how did that heads up go? Um, it was actually also, it was very similar to the 200K and with nine left, I win an all in with checks against ace nine on nine high, uh, pretty crucial one. And then double up again where I flop trips. And it was right at the cusp where, okay, Michael Sawyer was the big chip leader. And I tried to, like, tried to battle him because like it was very crucial points where at any point, if I win a bigger pot against him, I it flips and now I'm suddenly chip leader with position so that was kind of um that was kind of important so and then there was this hand where I fought with ace queen and now suddenly I am uh chip leading and same sim very similar thing from seven left to three left I suddenly am runaway chip leader um I busted a couple of I, I mean I busted five or six out of eight people on the final table it was I ran super super hot um and with three left, I, I I think I went into the heads up with 26 to 5 million. And so obviously I was like, hey, don't, you know, I had this before like three days ago and I really want to win the, the trophy and with, with Emad and uh, he was he was talking all the time and was like friendly chatting and uh, making fun and jokes and like mocking each other. So, uh, and like, I, I like that environment because I'm, I'm used to it from, from, from sports so i'm i'm happy with with chatting so we went in the heads up and it was a very chilled environment and i played it out with him and uh yeah and uh it was over rather fast but this was a moment where i was like okay i'm very confident um that i'm gonna win if it doesn't i will have to run very bad um so i just enjoyed chat with him and yeah i think the first all in that we had um i I was able to hold and uh, take it down. It felt really, really good. That's that's amazing. Do you do the bounties after the tournament ends or do they do it throughout? Um, so they do it the next day in the dinner break. So everybody comes together. They have this big bounty pool. And then the lowest number of, like, if you kick out the first entry or, like, seat uh, uh, entry number one, then you are the first to choose if you Ah, got okay. entry number two the second doesn't matter how many bounties you have so i was like maybe fourth um and then whatever bounties are left you pull and then you show them yeah they do a thing very, out of it. very very cool yeah no i've, I've been the majority of the triton stops i do a lot of commentary interviews i love yeah. it I, I i just i'm in love with triton man i they, obviously oh, i think you are too you've just picked up four million in a week there, <laughs> but tell me about will you be at all triton stops and give me a little bit of a difference in what triton how they're different from other stops that you've played um they do an amazing job in every little detail that's i would say like they make sure they have this amazing team uh kate tiana um they're all the stuff they have this vip hosts that make sure okay you like everything you have you, you come there uh, and you can focus on poker and the rest is taken care of which obviously is super nice for the players and also for the a VIP player, so they really enjoy playing. You have food at the table, you have great dealers. Um, and also what makes it special, I think the prestige, you know, it's just, it is the toughest series in the world. And it means a lot if you perform in this in this environment. And they promote it really well. They have great streams. It's, I would say, the best poker stream in the world. Yeah. Um, they have fun, a fun structure where it's like, like, okay, you play deep, but it kind of turbo-ish, kind of still a little bit to play. Um, and then you, 
the tournaments are over in two days. Every day is another tournament. Um, and it feels kind of like a big get together of like the, the high stakes uh, pros and then like uh, the VIPs who just have fun and you just connect. And it was just, I remember after, I think it was day one of the 40K, I had a pretty big stack and like uh, uh, Carl, uh, 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 Casey G, uh, and there was a Halloween party and which like everybody was just like going to the Halloween party, everybody had fun and then continued playing the next day. It was just like very lighthearted. Um, yeah. Event and it's just like, yeah, that's, that, that's how, what makes it special. And I said earlier, where there's like huge bubble and I was playing with, uh, with Bob and Elton and then it was just like a fun environment and that's what makes it special. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's, it's a great mix. And, and again, some pros, some, some non pros and the GG million live, which obviously we, we just did the commentary yeah. for GG millions online. And now they have this format where they're tracking at the major stops across different tournament series where they're doing yeah. this, uh, this event, it'll be at the world series here in the Bahamas. They do it kind of all over at the major ones and 187 entries. I think Webster's won this twice. I believe the specific Crazy. GG million one. <laughs> How is that tournament? And what do you think of the, the GG millions online and live? Oh, it's amazing. I, it was the first Triton I've ever played. And I think I got 10 for a final table. First Triton stop I ever played was in Vietnam. Yep. And the final table bubbled three. I think it was, I got 10th, 13th and 12th. And also I was just like, and I, like every, every single one was a million first and it was just like, whoa. And so it was kind of like, oof, that is uh, the first one. And I really like it. I mean, the 25K is fantastic. It's kind of deeper structure or like it takes a little, like it's a little slower structure than, than the others, um, which makes it cool. Um, always great events. I mean, this, ha this had like 190 runners. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah, 180 exactly, 187, and yeah, pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty cool. Big prize pool for a 25k, and I know the Bahamas has a uh, 15, no, 10 million guarantee on this one. Yeah. So that'll be it's a lot, lot of, lot of guaranteed runners. Two starting days that's coming up this this week. I think Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, actually, and then uh, they have the the 15 mil 5k main event. Yeah. Which I mean, I don't know. I, I'll be honest, it's ambitious. I think to get that many because of the conflict of the other major series i think it's going to be an overlay like i just don't see three thousand people going to the atlantis when like because because you're going to kind of compete that la vegas crowd right like they're like do i yeah. want to fly there fly back there's other side events before the big one even and it's just a yeah. lot so i don't know i mean but then it's the brand wsop gg it's for a bracelet it's in bahamas it's pretty fun so i don't know it'll be cool i mean it's great like I'm poker scene vibrant right now it just feels like live online the numbers are up the series the guarantees the main event just hit ten thousand entries in vegas which is crazy the new venue's nicer it's it's getting optimized so yeah I, i'm pretty bullish on on poker right now and and do you feel online or live do you feel more comfortable or do you think that like what 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 do you feel like the the level the general tendencies population are you do you feel like it's gotten softer harder there's all this new information but there's a lot of new people coming where do you, where do you feel it lays right now um, I mean, it's definitely gotten tougher. It just will always get tougher. It won't be getting any softer. Um, as in, I would say in the high stakes environments, people will just get better. Um, if you keep up with it, then you probably won't notice it too much. But I think also the distance between someone who's starting out and an absolute top pro is just like, it just keeps getting getting bigger. And so, yeah, that I mean, the top pros that today are just like, absolutely crazy good um would crush every rack four years ago any right. any top pro today um and it will be the same in four years probably um yeah so let, let me let me let me ask you a question about the poker code i'm just going to go with this because again there's like four or five different major yeah. brands and, and we'll just give you the the we'll give the yeah. love the poker code today yeah. as i mentioned uh some other very you know a lot of options but yeah. do you do you believe how much how much different or how much benefit if you go through the poker code curriculum um mm -hmm. today and you started like and you're a you play the game for 15 20 years and you're like break even maybe slight you know you understand all the principles you get three betting four betting you understand the terminology you're pretty good like beating definitely am like everyone else but you're not at the elite level like how how much of a difference would that be if you're like one year into poker 
and you kind of still understand a bit and you're, you know, learning, but you're like, how, how much more effective is it for someone that's been a lot around and more experienced? Like how much more are they going to get out of the curriculum than someone that's like, call it a beginner brand, pretty brand new. Um, I wouldn't say it's one, one thing fits all you like every, like be poker code or all the other brands. Um, the idea of like now buying a course and then suddenly you are a really good player. That's just not how like you can become better. Of course you get ideas, you have, uh, like starting to think different. You like better people show you, uh, in the game, like how to think about it. These things you can take away. What really makes a difference on the high stakes level is having a routine, having a feedback loop of players who are very good um having a schedule of okay if you're unsure about this situation how do you study that um yeah. that will that will separate the the good from the best uh, but if you are a beginner and you just want to be a little bit better and you want to compete in your home game or you may want to play in your play a live tournament and don't lose too much that definitely will help um i mean i did raise your edge when i like like before poker code was out I did raise your edge. It was funny because I wrote down because I, I'm if I write it down, I remember it better. So I wrote down yeah. all notes that I had from uh, from the course. I watched the whole course. I wrote everything down and made it into a book for me to like. I wrote down all the notes to, from Ben, all the mm -hmm. ranges, made it into a book, printed it out, got the book delivered, and then started with that book. That's how I was like, okay, that's Ben is a crusher, and I I I start I want to study um what it does so it did that so it made me better um, which but ben? It, uh, you're referencing which ben uh raise your edge ben oh you're saying from Red but okay yeah mm -hmm. ben CP, yeah yeah and it i, I did what with most of uh, poker content and um it definitely makes you better like the deeper you go into it but the idea of just watching the video and like understanding everything just won't happen you have to actively work um while watching you have to um, take the ideas and run with it because like you can only say so much in one video about one thing and doesn't matter who teaches you it's just like you start thinking in a way and then you there are yeah, so yeah. many more ways and once you start um understanding concepts better then i think you make bigger big and, and and is there a law of diminishing returns or how valuable is it to have done raise your edge and poker code and can you tell me some similarities and differences in the material or is it just I mean, styles, the styles of teaching, but the same info? Um, I would say it's just like Razor Edge was four years prior to Poker Code. So it's, I would say it's not comparable um, in the way it was done. It was just like, it was, I, I don't know how it is today. It was, at that time, it was uh, it was good. And Poker Code was 2018, 2019, and now they have the, the, the new schedule, it's not a course that came out four years ago. It's a, I think they have monthly or weekly uh, coachings. And I think that's where the value comes from. If you're up to date, game changes so much. What's, what's, real, what's true four years ago, it's not true today anymore. Yeah. Four years why, ago. Why is that? Why is yeah. it that the game changes that much? And like, is it just that like, is it, is it because of population tendencies? Is it because of new learnings? Like it is funny to look at. Over the years, yeah. but different, you know, the ways the games change with the three bet, four bet, five bet, six bet. Now it's like, you know, there's just a, it's, it does shift, right? And the sizings yeah. are different. So w w is it just to just give me, give me a little bit of it and uh, look at what that's like and why? I mean, people just get better. I would say that that drives and they get closer to what's correct. And then big leagues and big exploits don't work anymore. Like Fedor in 2016, he was just like, way out of line in every note but it worked fantastically because people didn't defend enough didn't forward enough um didn't three bet so he could just open everything three bet everything um, and just like red line the whole tournament through and then it, it added that they were start getting scared of that because they didn't really have an answer to that um same like other styles like michael damo like two years ago we had that run and people were kind of intimidated by it and um, didn't want to play back because like they didn't really have an answer, didn't want to call down too much. Um, and I think that shifts people adapt and okay, like, okay, if he's so aggressive and does all these things, we just call more. And then the style become like style that ex it's an exploit to be too aggressive. 
uh, becomes less effective because people defend better. And then like at some point, like it shifts, they defend too much because like every bluff catcher becomes profitable. So you never fold the bluff catcher again. And then like, if you never fold the bluff catcher, all the bluffs become losing and then suddenly right. okay, not effective anymore. And that's how kind of it, it, it shifts. And I think now it like in, also in, in, in high stakes, it's everybody's out of line kind of, and nobody folds and it goes, it went very the other way from like even just two years ago. So, um, yeah, it, it will always, and then it, it will wiggle back. And I think it goes more into the, um, close and closer to, to it's, it, we won't be playing close to optimal, but like closer and making less mistakes. And, um, that's where it will develop to. Do you think poker has a chance to to dry up or die, or is it just like always? There's now there's four card PLO, five card, there's six card, there's Omaha high low, there's variations, Badusi, Badegi, but you know like the six plus or short deck. Like there's always games. People are always gambling. Do you think poker is just historic going to be around forever and just new variations? Yeah, or I, I think yeah. so. I think even hold them. Like I mean, yes, you have maybe thirty guys who play extremely well um, right now, but like maybe five years from now, considered really well it's not that good anymore actually um and it will just get uh, tougher and like new people will show up and it's just something will fade out um but the game like we're talking about the top 0.1 percent of the economy like playing any tournament in the world where it's for most of the people it's a fun thing and we just play this will always um be a thing because it's really fun to play tournaments and will there be Will it be profitable to play quite high raked high rollers five years from now now? Or is everybody too good and like other people just have too big of a disadvantage to even play and then this will fade out? Yes, maybe. Or it will just be like everybody is so popular and now everybody play wants to play that high and then it doesn't matter anymore. Because it's not about like how good they'll be, it's more about the ratio of how many good players and how many just want to play it and uh, this is how yeah. i think the economy will, will will settle down and then people who are not as good will fade out and yeah just like it has been can you see a day where you have a similar experience with soccer where you get a bit sour on poker and you just want to move in another direction have you ever gotten close to a point where you've said this is it for me in poker or i think i'm gonna be doing something else or i guess it's sort of newer uh, when you've really dove into it, but do you have any experiences like that or could you see yourself stopping with poker anytime soon? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I even had that this year. For me, it was, um, I was playing every Sunday for like four years and playing online, playing live, traveling, having my laptop everywhere. And I just didn't really enjoy playing Sunday or playing online. It was just like, felt okay, don't, didn't know if like, uh, if that's the one I do on a summer day and I'll start playing. Um, so it was just, okay, how about I just pause it for like two months and I didn't play basically at all July, August, um, and didn't was like, okay, kind of missed it, but yeah. And then in, in September I started playing, uh, again and I felt amazing. It was just, okay, now I had a break and I really enjoy it because I, I really enjoy if I feel the, feel the process. If I don't feel much process, then I just kind of lose interest. Um, and I got back to it in September and then it was, it was also crazy different because like I looked at my win rate before and then when I had passion, it was just like before I was maybe like four or five big binds and then after coming back, I had like 10 and it just like feels very different if you enjoy it. And I totally noticed that and noticed that in the results as well. Um, had a great two months online and then great, uh, week life so yeah yeah I'm, I'm i feel i, I should have i knew in that moment man i, I just had a, you, you were in good form you basically won the the gg million online was doing the commentary we spoke briefly yeah. then and then you were off to the million the millions i should have known you were uh gonna just take it all down should have put some bets in on these different sites <laughs> and wager on it that was actually was, uh, funny because like you remember the um you remember the 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 chichi there's this betting thing you know, mm -hmm. and I looked at the betting and I was chip leading and I don't know who was second. And there was, uh, there was the odds on like how likely I meant to win. And I think I had 
the, the right odds should have like if you just do it by chips i should have had like 3.5 or 3.6 and my odds to win as a chip leader was like 3 3.9 and i was like oh they like wow. completely i was like okay they definitely uh undervalue me or think like i'm not like basically not having a positive win yeah. rate or winning the tur tournament on that final table and overvaluing the others uh so i i i told all of my friends guys I think the line is 3.4, so it's 3.9. I think it's just like printing, and I'm I'm pretty confident I'm gonna win this one. And, wow. uh, and they all bet it. And I think they put down like I don't know 15k or something, and then one one another uh, 60 out of that. But uh, that's sick. Yeah. That's, 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 that's nice to find a, a gap in these things. And yeah, maybe maybe now you got the street cred though. I don't know if uh, <laughs> if you're gonna be able to get away with that with those type of odds. Um, my, my, uh, my dad had a question here. He, I actually, I believe he just passed away, but a great, he was a great investor, Charlie Munger. He was second oh, yeah. in command at Berkshire Hathaway. I said that poker taught him to fold early when the odds are against you, or if you have a big edge back it heavily because you don't get a big edge often. So seize it when it comes. So he's at, and my dad's saying, what are a couple of lessons that you have taken away from poker? Uh, and do you believe poker is a metaphor for life? Oh, there's so many things in poker where you you can translate it. Um, it. I think it teaches the the best is like the things you just cannot control and you have to be okay with it. I think that's what learned me the most. And I'm actually like, I'm in that poker bubble. So this is kind of normal. But once you go outside and you meet the people who are not familiar with that concept too much, they take things that like are absolutely not their thing too personal or take it too hard. And yeah, in my eyes okay well if the fridge breaks down yes okay you're out 500 dollars, but that is just bad variance like it's kind of a bad but like for others it's just like okay it's it's a big deal or like you you i don't know you flip over the tv and you break it like that's and these things i i would say um this helped me crazy and like so um yeah i would say there are many many things you can take away like patience and you don't deserve anything kind of like it's not fair that poker is definitely not fair even if you work hard maybe it doesn't pay off right away you just have uh, you have to go through hard times like there's so many things that uh, poker teaches you indirectly that you don't realize also in the moment um yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and i love charlie manga and uh, their berkshire Hathaway uh yearly meetings with warren buffett it's sad that he passed away yeah i think he was almost 100 or in the 90s i don't know yeah i'm not shy of 100. oh really yeah wow i didn't realize it was that close that's crazy that's actually that's uh that's that's pretty wild um yeah, yeah so that yeah that's uh that is that is i think you're right there's a lot of i mean the, again the metaphors with poker it is kind of it is kind of crazy and I, I would say an example too of like credit card roulette it's funny because yeah. like with with dinner going to dinners with friends and poker it's like there's never a time where i go to a meal with friends that are, understand gambling or whatever that we don't just gamble for a bill right whether it's a hundred dollar lunch or a, a yeah. dinner that's whatever because again that, like you understand the principle of equity and yeah. odds and like it's an independent event and it's you know going to even out but it's fun and it's safe whatever but like if you go to like a group with non-poker players like that concept is crazy or people are like you know thinking there's something rigged about it or like even you know if they if someone loses the bill i always see this too where they're like if i'm with a group and like a few people maybe aren't normal do it but they're open yeah. to it right and they do it and then they lose and they'll say they'll tell you the yeah. person who won thank you for dinner right but like really it's yeah. everyone contributed to dinner right yeah. everyone took their equal share of risk and, and then that guy paid but it's just funny like the, the concepts in like the world i do feel it's like a cheat code to have played poker and to really get it and understand and the highs, the lows, the good, the bad, the ugly, you see the best people, yeah. the worst people. And like, you yeah. really get a lot of experience in uh, that I do feel like translates to life. Like, I feel like I have a superpower, like in any yeah. social situation, yeah. I just feel like I'm, you know, I, I just, I like, cause I have different ways of looking at things and approaching things. And I don't know, I don't know if you feel that way, but I, I really Very do much. feel yeah. it's an advantage for every day operations that you're just like and, and the same thing the markets the crypto or you know stock market plummets like i don't even blink but like if the market <laughs> goes down five percent you know your parent people are talking about it like man this is crazy like what are we gonna do you know like how it's like i'm, I'm getting my my uh, zombie apocalypse bunker ready and like all this stuff and i'm just like you know you could the, the crypto could drop 35 percent and you could just be like all right like you know another day it's like not even i even think it's 
even crazier with the stock market where it's just like everybody goes crazy stock market is down 20 percent at the same time you're like into crypto and it just happens in a day and you're just like well it's only 20 percent like i don't it's, really like yes 20 well. percent, but it's probably not going down to zero and then it's just like how it's crazy how uh that changes over time and it's just, just like purely thinking ev which is yep. like hey, yeah, that amount of money in in stocks and it's just like x ev per year and it doesn't matter at all if it goes up or down or sideways or spins in a circle it's just and it's it's funny like that that teaches poker and like the variance and, and i mean you kind of have to be crazy to play tournaments for a living so uh the variance there is uh yep. not comparable to any of those all right, I got two more questions. I know we're already an hour and 20 in and, and, and I'm mm -hmm. learning a lot and enjoying it and appreciate the time. I do want to look at, I mean, your 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 photos on Instagram look very professionally done or, and I know you've done yeah. like travel. Is that, is that a business that you like you you do specifically? And are these like professional photo photos mm -hmm. taken or what? what, is, what mean, is your travel experience? Especially like they are, I think they're iPhone, most of them. Um, okay. It was a phase right after soccer. I traveled a lot and was like, okay, maybe it, I just posted and build up the um, social media brand. I noticed that's not something really for me. I, it's I'm not a blogger. I don't enjoy it. Um, and then I just was like, hey, it's it's I just it's it's not for me. I don't want to be an uh, influencer. And uh, yeah, but it was a fun time. We traveled a ton, went yeah. to great yeah. places. Um, very very great experience. And again, I, I wish I could have appreciated how crazy of an special experience is back then um because that just felt okay i'm young i will be forever young which i'm probably won't be and like these trips of course i could do them right now again but uh you you, you probably don't want to like stay at a hostel at 27 anymore and um, it's right well yeah it's also now you have a fiance and you have uh, a trip with your boys it's like you don't just yeah. go and do whatever whenever and exactly you, it, it's it is it changes and 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 i did want to ask what your uh phone is some of your favorite places to play poker in the world what are some of your favorite stops okay and, I have you, two. and, I have and two. you get to play tourist you do it do you feel you do a good job when you go to a place that you actually like come early or stay late and visit and do stuff or do you kind of just stay at the casino and the venue i, I do I, I try to and i i don't mind taking a day off uh and just skipping a tournament um i mostly like compared to online it's probably like money wise sometimes even smarter to play online so like i see that live trips as kind of a holiday or just an experience as well so if i have a fun time with someone and i rather have dinner then i rather do that um and two places absolutely amazing um, both are in austria um seefeld which is in the winter it's right before triton this year i'm not sure if i can make it um amazing winter town absolutely amazing cool casino I think it's like a 2K main event and a 5K high roller. They had sometimes run the 25K, but only if like it runs. Um, and then you just go skiing. It's absolutely amazing. Perfect. Wow. Like 10 out of 10. How days. do you spell that? Uh, Seefeld. It's like S E E and then F E L D. Seefeld. Okay. Crazy. It's, it's a Casino Austria Poker Tour. Um, absolutely amazing place. And then another one. And, and actually, Seyfeld, there was talks if they do a Triton event, that would be uh, insane. Like, if they absolutely insane uh, spot for to have a Triton event. Oh. Uh, but it's not that easy in Austria with the regulations and stuff. Um, and then another one is Felden in the summer. It's like it's like European Poker Championship, also from the Casinos Austria. Probably the nicest casino, poker casino, I don't want to say in the world because I don't have been to many, but definitely nicest casino I've ever been in my life. It's just, wow. you have to imagine, it's like the uh, Wörthersee. It's a really beautiful lake. Like if you go to my Instagram page, actually, I'll show that. Um, uh, scroll up a little bit. Uh, up, up, up here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's one a little bit down, I think. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm, yes this one. If you click on it the video yeah yeah this is this is felden it's absolutely crazy and the cas the the uh, casino is at the lake right direct it has a it has a dock 
the casino and you play you basically wow. have the open place and then you play in this area it's summertime it's like a very expensive area in austria absolutely amazing it's very cool crazy 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 nice i couldn't that's cool. recommend it because the austrian yeah. european poker terms are interesting i have not yeah. see i have not heard of this so that that's that's actually great because a lot of stops and people talk about the major tour stops and you know stuff i've already known or heard of but so that's two new ones to to put down on the yeah. list and i and another one of my last questions what do you think of Lionel mm -hmm. messi playing soccer football in miami do you think it's possible for american football to become competitive with football nations around the world uh, or is that a pipe dream? Can American football at the, the MLS level and also the U.S. national team, can they compete for a World Cup? Do you think that you'll see that in our lifetime? And what's your thoughts on American soccer? Oh, 100%. I mean, I mean I've mean, i watched the back documentary. I didn't realize it back then, but like um, how he was playing in the in the LA Galaxy when, they, when he was like 2007, like mm -hmm. how they played back then compared to how they play now insane difference way more professional yeah. way better players everybody's professional um very different i think um it will take some while it, it it needs to be become like socially a priority for kids to play soccer and have this more availability once that happens and once once it becomes a mass thing even in the southern states or in the northern states it's uh it, I mean, America has 300 million people. Once they get into it and they have a decent system for people to develop, it would just be one of the, the, the biggest nations. Um, with the MLS developing at the same time, I think it needs, needs improvement of the youth system. And in, I mean, in Europe, every country, football is the priority. Every single country, that's the sport. Even in Austria, we are great at skiing, but football is by far the most popular sport. And we get drilled from a very young age um or i would say filtered out like if you're better uh, in your team then you get uh, extra training and extra like their academies and things where the better players get uh, extra uh, education yeah. Yeah. and it starts at a very young age and it filters out at the very young age. so like it's 15 16 17 you know if you can make it to become a pro and like at 17 18 you like you kind of know already and I would say in America, it's different. If you go to college and then you college graduate and then you go to MLS, I would kind of say that is too late because, I mean, Mbappe is 24. He probably graduated college like last year and he's already won almost won two World Cups, has scored hundreds of goals in Europe. Like he's, that's like that's the difference where yeah. there will be American players coming into the European system and then expanding. So I think the national team will be good how the general broad american um uh level will increase is only by building the infrastructure and culture around it um, and this will take time but it will be driven by the interest first the passion first and then everything will follow um if there will be mls will be on the level of uh of a european league i don't know when um but if the passion is there it will and I mean, uh, that it's definitely like America is a financial powerhouse. So yeah. if there is a way to make MLS uh, competitive with those, maybe have a team playing the Champions League or something, then yeah, maybe. Yeah. What, what's your route, Mount Rushmore for uh, soccer footballers, we'll say, of all time? Do you Are you a Messi, Ronaldo guy, Maradona, Pele? Where does it rank for you? Because oh. you, you actually understand the game. Yeah. So I can ask you this question. I'm curious what you're, where you uh, fit that all in. I mean, it's so tough. Like, I also... I might, I kind of feel bad for Ronaldo because like right now, like after the World Cup and like the, everything afterward, like it became so clear. Okay, MS is so clearly the, the best. Definitely is not clearly the best. It's like super thin margin. I've been both like, insanely amazing. Um, I would say if I had to choose one, I would choose Messi. Um, it's, but it's just like if Ronaldo won the World Cup, everybody says it's Ronaldo. And yeah, that's it's kind of, it is sick. It is so it's sick. So and, and, and that's you know, the it, it, it's so similar to poker. It's like you yeah. know, like take Fedor or take Justin yeah. Bonomo and bring Kenny. Yeah. Like there's no they're they're battling one and two for the earnings of all time. Like they're anti-sweating each other so hard, even if they were best friends and they loved each other. They like you gotta root for like every you know, they, they just want to be number one. And like Ronaldo, they do that chess photo with uh the, the Louis Vuitton ad at the start, and it's it really is like it felt like it's like a duel off yes. for who was gonna be the best, and the fact that one of them actually won 
It's like yeah. he's got that had to like ruin Ronaldo's spirits. Yeah. Like truly, it must have really yeah, put him in like yeah. a depression for a while because he's so competitive. But it's crazy to see how competitive he is. And look at the year he's having right now. I mean, yeah. he's in this league that you could argue is not great, but he's scoring like epic goals. He's mm -hmm. like at the top of his game again. Like it's yeah. crazy. He's doing it at the Portugal level. And just like you wonder, are these guys really going to go another World Cup? At this point, like I think Ronaldo, I don't see Ronaldo not being on the squad. I think so too. And I think it's like you kind of have to. I think Messi also got perceived as in the later stages. Okay, he's the better. He won the World Cup. That was just variance. Also, Messi had the way better team. Portugal was not at the level to compete. Um, Ronaldo won the European Championship, which is a crazy accomplishment with that team. Also, variance, but you know, it's and with, with Messi, then the storyline fits. That's why I really can, now it's Messi. But you also cannot forget that Ronaldo is like two or three years older. So he is 38 competing against a 34-year-old who is definitely way fitter at 34 than 38. And people just think it's the same thing. Like, no, they're not the same. They're different age. I don't yeah. know if Messi will play with 38. You know, I just retired 36. And Ronaldo yeah. at 34, absolutely insane crush. He was still at, uh, I think at this time it was at Juventus, but like, at 32 at Real Madrid, yeah. it's just like, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. It, it, it's actually crazy, too, to think about that. I mean, Messi, if you remember in the World Cup, they lost that to Saudi Arabia in the first game. And then they actually had to win, and he scored a goal to put them yeah. through. Like, they had to beat Mexico, and it was like 1-0, and I think it was late. So, like, they could have been out in the first round. And even then, like, Portugal goes to, like, the, in the playoffs, or at least to, like, later, you know, the quarters or whatever, the round six. So, like, yeah, it, it is crazy. And it's similar in poker. Like, you know, you could lose a flip, right? Ace, king, to queens. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're just now, it's like, and then you don't go play, or this, they, people talk about this. And, you know, we talk about, I said to you on the GG Million show, Sun Run, you're kind of in like the, the, you're on a heater. You hit the two big scores, second, first, four million in cash as you win the GG Million online. You're in like big form. And, you know, I, I know you don't want to like jinx or think about these things, but you, the Dan Coleman, Justin Bonomo, Bryn Kinney, you know, Daniel Granio, and you could throw in, um, yeah, Fedor, right? These type of Dan Coleman runs. There's been a few where guys just can't miss. And the, the confidence is there. The people are scared of you. And it's just kind of all working. So, you know, I wish you luck. I hope it continues in the Bahamas. Maybe we'll go heads up in uh, the main event. I'm going to throw that Ooh, in yeah. the universe. That would be fun. Or the 25K GG million. And uh, yeah, man, I appreciate the time. I've definitely gotten nice to, to get to connect. We've played a few times live, but haven't really ever gotten to... to uh, hang out and i think who won the dinner i won the dinner but it doesn't matter we'll, have, well bahamas i saw i saw the norman chad and uh lon mccarran promo videos there's some new restaurants there i've been to atlanta so many times um we'll uh we'll have to have a nice dinner one yes. night there hopefully on a dinner break of one of these these tournaments and we'll we'll have some fun and i appreciate again appreciate the time congrats on the engagement and congrats on all the success thank you for joining today and we will uh hopefully do more podcasts and, and things in the future hope be cool thank you jeff Awesome, everyone. That's Mario Mosbuck. I'm pronouncing it the best I can, and we appreciate the time. There, we're getting there. We're we're learning. We're optimizing GTO. We're doing it all. We'll see you guys for another episode of the Flow Show very soon. Thanks again to Mario for the time, and I'll see him in the Bahamas. And if you see us there, please say hello and good luck to you if you're playing there. It's going to be a great series there in Nassau at the Atlantis for the WSOP, which is starting, I believe, uh, this weekend. It's starting very soon, and, and we'll be going yeah. until the 14th. So we'll uh, we'll see you guys there. Safe travels to everyone. Safe travels to you, Mario, and I'll see you there. Cheers. Cool.